wallpapers and desktop widgets. Uh, I'll give you a uh, background and some examples of live wallpapers as well as like a high level high level implementation details. Uh, then if you will we'll walk through a, a code example and show you more details, more specifics. Uh, after that, Daniel and Brett will take over and talk about desktop widgets for you. So first of all, uh, what is a live wallpaper? It's really just a, a way to enhance the user experience on the phone. Uh, give you an animated eye-catching screen. Um, just a, a, a more rich experience overall. Um, a live wallpaper is, you know, at first you might think it's kind of like a video that runs on your screen or something like that, but it's really much closer to an app. Uh, really a live wallpaper can do anything that any of your applications uh, that we've written up until this point can do. Uh, it has access to all the features on your phone, like GPS, camera, compass, accelerometer, uh, all of your drawing tools. Um, so it really is uh, really close to an app, and you can do pretty much anything with it. So I'll go back and forth between examples and you know some some text, but nothing catches people's attention like zombies. So our first example of a live wallpaper is uh, Pixel Zombies, and. Uh, so you have to use your imagination a little bit here, but all these pixels are constantly moving on your screen. The green are civilians, red are zombies, blue are the hunters, and you can see the hunters zapping zombies. Um, this this uh, live wallpaper actually overloads the on-touch event uh, method, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And uh, whenever you touch the screen, you can drop a bomb. Um, there's a few settings implemented here. You can adjust the size of your bomb, population size, uh, you can keep score, so like while everything's moving around, there's more zombies, you know, more hunters, whatever. You can see actually the score that's that's uh, going on in the game. Um, so according to Android Market, there's between 10 and 50,000 installs of this app at a dollar a piece. Um, so how's a live wallpaper implemented? Uh, a live wallpaper is pretty much a service with one extra method. Um, so it's implemented as a, a wallpaper service object. Um, again, just a service with the onCreateEngine method uh, implemented. This onCreateEngine method um, just returns an instance of a class that you have to you have, you have to define it on your own that extends the engine class. Uh, so this engine is really the guts of the live live wallpaper. It draws the wallpaper, handles all the touch events, manages the life cycle. Um, Aside from the engine, the wallpaper may or may not have a settings activity to allow you to adjust some of the some of the you know configuration details, I guess. So in summary, wallpaper service generates the engine and the engine does most of the work. So our next example is this wave live wallpaper. It uses the accelerometer to rock the boat. So as you move your phone back and forth, the boat goes side to side. Um, on offsets change is a new method that we'll talk about a little later that this, this uh, wallpaper implements. Basically on offsets change is when you swipe the screen. And here when you swipe the screen you can see this skyline in the background and it actually moves over to the side so you can see more of the skyline when you swipe the, swipe the screen. Um, has a few settings implemented here that you can adjust the wave speed, frame rate, and there's between 50 and 100,000 installs on, from the Android market. Um, adjusting this frame rate is a common setting you'll find in live wallpapers. Uh, basically, it's going to require less from the CPU if you have a lower frame rate. Frame rate. So let's talk about the engine a little bit. Uh, obviously, a class of your own that extends the engine class. Uh, so live wallpapers can be expensive. Uh, they can run down your battery, especially for uh, cell phones with larger screens. Um, so developers need to make sure that they, they're careful with their implementation of their live wallpaper. Make sure that it's only running when it's in fact visible. And to do that, they just need to make sure that they've correctly implemented the on visibility change method. Uh, basically, the actual painting of the live wall wallpaper is usually done in its own thread. And on visibility change, when you know the wallpaper becomes invisible, there's an application in the foreground, uh, you need to make sure that you pause the painting or make sure the thread is bleeding and no longer running. And, and similarly, when it becomes visible, you need to resume painting. So this is the equivalent of the on resume and on pause methods for an application. Um, so you need to make sure these are implemented correctly. 
some other methods in the, the engine class, you mentioned on offsets changed. Uh, what do you do when the user swipes? And on command. The on command method actually reacts to events from the home, scre home screen. There's only two events, but uh, whenever the user taps or drops one of their uh, icons for their applications, you know, your, your live wallpaper can respond to that, can do something when, they, uh, when one of those events occurs. So our next application, this one was really simple, but uh, with how many downloads it is and the fact that it costs a dollar, uh, this is something any of us could really, could really implement. Um, basically, it just uses the clock on the phone to change the sky color. Uh, the clouds in the background move, and there's lights on the street here that show traffic moving. Uh, you can adjust the traffic speed, adjust the cloud speed, and again, when you swipe, you can view more of the city. This is just a really simple wallpaper, but at a dollar and you know maybe a hundred thousand installs, uh, the developers have done done pretty well with it. Uh, before I hand it over to Jafe, the last uh, implement, last bit of implementation that I want to mention is uh, what changes in the manifest for live wallpapers. Uh, basically, you just need to make sure you set the permission to bind wallpaper to make sure that your, your wallpaper actually can bind to the home screen. Um, and also, we have this new metadata tag. This is just used to describe the wallpaper via uh, an XML resource, um, just detailing you know, uh, details about the wallpaper. Uh, we also have the uses SDK and uses feature tags, which we talked about last week in lecture, just to make sure that the appropriate filters are applied in the Android market. Um, Live wallpapers are only implemented for, uh, or only available on Android 2.1 and beyond. So that's API level seven. Now there are some wallpapers that you can get not through the, uh, the Android market, obviously. One of those is a, a Super Mario wallpaper, which I think they took down for copyright reasons. But uh, for that, I'm, I'm not sure you would need these, these tags, actually. So. My last example is the Anapet Aquarium. Uh, $2 up to 500,000 installs from the marketplace, so developers have done extremely well. Basically, on a touch event, you drop food into the tank. Uh, on offsets change, so when you swipe, you can see more of your aquarium. If you don't feed the fish, they can die. Uh, the more you feed them, the more they grow, and as they mature, they can have babies. So it's a pretty uh, fun and, and highly detailed uh, wallpaper. So, that's it for, for live wallpapers, and GFA is going to take over it and show you a little, a little bit more about uh, implementation details and show you at a, more, a lower level what live wallpapers are doing.